Welcome to session number two, um, the school of the supernatural. You know, these are very basic things and it's there for every Christian, every believer. And so in the first session, we saw that one must be filled with the Holy Spirit and that one must desire spiritual gifts. It's godly to do that when we focus on our hunger for God and focus on knowing Him. Because that's why the Holy Spirit has been sent. The word is Parakletos, the one who comes alongside us to help us to know the Father and to be effective witnesses. He, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You know, and I've seen it so many times. You know, even with Paul, you know, the angel appears to him and says, Paul, don't be afraid. You know, just speak. I'll put words in your mouth. I've seen it so many times that God would even use, you know, the things that I said and I didn't even know that, you know. I remember one day sharing a testimony at the School of the Supernatural. And I'm sharing the testimony. And while I'm sharing, there's a guy sitting in the second row. And I'm pointing to him. I say, like, you know, I had this thing. And there was a guy sitting in the second row in that space. And then, oh no, the guy started to weep. Because his situation was exactly the same as the testimony I shared. And God just brought many breakthroughs. You know, let's not limit God. I remember one day sharing, you know, in a church service. And the Lord gave me a word of knowledge about a young guy who was 25 years old and uh, very specific things. And so I said, well, that guy must please come to the front. And I waited and it was awkward. <laughs> Nobody came. You know, I probably waited five minutes. It felt like 30. And so... Um, I went home that night and I was just so, so desperate and so discouraged because I really thought I heard God, you know, and um, forgot about it. And six months later, you know what happened? A guy phoned me out of London and he said he woke up at 3 a.m. And then he felt the Lord spoke to him like clearly that he must go and listen to a specific sermon that I preach on a specific day and he must start at 32 minutes and 10 seconds. Maybe it was 14 seconds. I can't remember the seconds. So he did that. He went on the internet. He looked. And then that word of knowledge was exactly his situation, exactly into his circumstances. He repented. He uh, asked for forgiveness. And the next day he phoned me. He said, do you remember that sermon which you preached six months ago? <laughs> that word was for me. <laughs> And I thought like, wow, God can use so many opportunities, so many things, so many circumstances. When we're willing vessels to be used by God. But there are some principles that we need to understand. And so we're going to focus on them because we're focusing on having a lifestyle of being a believer, a lifestyle of the supernatural. Not just sometimes, but every day. And I believe God wants to use every believer at least once, one divine opportunity per day. To pray for somebody, to be reminded of something, to maybe phone somebody. I've, I've walked in Port Elizabeth one day and I'm crossing these major car lines, you know, and cars are driving. And in the middle of the road, the Holy Spirit says to me, phone this guy now. And I'm standing there waiting for the cars to pass. And so I take out my phone and I phone him as I'm walking across the street. As I get to the other side of the street. The guy's weeping and he says, I will, I'm so discouraged, so depressed. And I, right now I cried out to God and said, God, I need to phone. You need to let somebody phone me just to encourage me and pray for me. Wow. <laughs> you know, and so it's, it's so amazing when you work with God, when you, God uses you and you're sensitive to the working of the Holy Spirit in your life. It doesn't mean you need to be super spiritual and like, oh, you know, have your spiritual antennas on all day. Now, sometimes hey, God just uses natural things also to speak to people. So the first thing that we need principles in using the gifts and having a lifestyle of being used by God is to love. That is so simple. That is probably the most important thing. It's compassion. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and these are the chapters that we are reading. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13 and 14. And especially 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, If I speak in tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a changing symbol. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. You know, what a beautiful scripture. Love is the motivation. Why? Because we don't want to judge people 
We want them to experience God. So the supernatural opens the door for people to know that Jesus is real. You know, because when you, I remember sitting um, at the Nielsen, which is this restaurant area for students. And I was sitting on the red plane there. There was um, a guy, a very intellectual guy, and he just wanted to argue with me. He was sitting with all his scientific books there and all that stuff. Nothing wrong with science because, hey, there's great scientists that believe in God. But he said, I don't really believe. And I said to him, well, let me talk to you about your mother that found you this morning about that incurable disease. God knows about that. And I remember he was sitting with this book and it fell out of his hand and he just started to weep. He says, how do you know? How do you know this? How do you know about this? He said, well, God told me because God showed me that he's interested in you. He knows you. He knows every part. He knows every hair on your head. And so that's what many people are longing for. They're not looking for our theological doctrine and all that stuff. Some people are really offended with the church because we're trying to Bible bash them. But just one word. Go read, you know, and this is your homework for this session. Go and read John chapter 4 and see how Jesus encountered the woman at the well. Yeah. He actually had to send his disciples away because here he was ministering a male to a female, which was a Samaritan, and he gets a word of knowledge for him. But just so beautifully, he doesn't come and say, oh, you sinner, you disgraceful woman because you're sleeping with a lot of men. He just says, go call your husband. And she said, well, no. And he said, well, the one that you're with is not your husband. Yeah, Beautiful how he ministered to her. And then she wanted to become all religious with him. But eventually she ran away and forgot her water pot. And she became a massive evangelist because she changed so much by encountering Jesus that when she came back, the whole city came out, came to hear about a man who told her all things that she ever did. But, you know, he just spoke to her about one issue. <laughs> but her whole life was transformed because she had an encounter with God. But we cannot have encounters if there's not love, if there's not an atmosphere of somebody knowing that God loves them. And so, you know, in Peter 4 verse 6, it's above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. First Peter 4. You know, Matthew 14 says, when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them and healed their sick, you know. So what did Jesus come to do? Physical healings? Spiritual healings, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken order, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. The working of the Holy Spirit is to bring liberty, to bring freedom, to set the prisoners free, you know, to see people being delivered and see them know God. But compassion. He was moved by compassion. The old King James says actually bowels of inner mercy were stirred inside of Christ. We saw that when Jesus wept over Lazarus, you know, when Jesus was moved inside. He was spiritually moved because God wants us to be moved. It's love. It's We love people. It's not there for a show business. It's not there because we want to feel great and write books or put it on our CV, you know. No, simply, you know, I've seen God raise two people from the dead. And I'll tell you honestly, I had nothing to do with it. I, I didn't even have enough faith to pray. There was a student with me that prayed with me and said, hey, we must probably pray for this guy. Because I was thinking like, oh, what are we going to do now? He says, let's pray. We're Christians. And I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> Step number one, if you don't know anything, pray, you know, call upon the name of the Lord. And, uh, and I've seen so many miracles. God opening deaf ears, blind eyes, healing cancer. The same Jesus of the Bible. But I want to tell you, you can take no glory for that. We pray, He does the healing. We speak by faith, He does the work. You know, He gets all the glory for that. But our motivation is compassion. Our motivation is love. And see, unfortunately, many times we grow up in a, in a culture where there's a lot of shame, competition, rejection. You know, And so let me just put it straight. There's no competition between the different gifts. So if you have a gift of serving or giving, you're not less spiritual than somebody that casts out demons. So if you have the gifts of the Father, the gifts of the Son, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, some of them are power gifts. They, let, they really like show the power of God. But that doesn't mean that person is better or greater because they have a power gift. 
No, simply we're all serving Jesus. And some people, hey, it's just a function. It's got nothing to do with your identity. It's got nothing to do with your worth. And in the same way, in the way to which we minister, in the way which we minister to people, you know, we love them. And so we want them, that is our focus. We want them to grow in their relationship with you. And so growing a relationship with God and with you as because hey, part of that is discipleship. Part of that is raising up a generation. We're not just there to do a quick fix and run away. We want to walk a road with people. And so Romans 5 verse 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So, hey, God will give you a capacity to love unconditionally. Peter said to Jesus, Jesus, I love you like a friend. And Jesus says, do you agape love me? Do you love me unconditionally? Now we cannot love like that. But that's what the Holy Spirit will help you with. Say, God, give me a love for this person on the street. Give me a love for this petrol attendant. Give me a love, Lord. And, and sometimes we just need to be very practical. Ask them, what's your name? Where do you come from? Just, you don't need to be get a word of knowledge every time when you encounter somebody. But being interested in their lives, where they come from, listening to their stories. And then from that place, beginning to pray for them. Sometimes just ask them, can I pray for you? You don't need a word of wisdom. You don't need a word of knowledge, like I said. You know, it's just because we love people. God is in the people business. Jesus died for people ordinary sinners like you and me and so hey let's open up our hearts and so the last part of this love is that we must train ourselves to have a culture of honoring and celebration and so start with the people around you you know maybe some of the homework you can do is just simply go and think of the five best friends you have and trust god for a scripture for each one of them that's how we start practicing the gifts is simply by saying lord what's on your heart for George, what's on your heart for Mashe? What's on your heart for somebody next to me? And then God will start to give you his heart and then write it out on a piece of paper, give it to them, buy them a chocolate, say, hey, I just wanted to bless you. In your small group, that's where we start. In your, in your friendship groups, but learn to ask God this simple question, Lord, who did you create this person to be? And then you start to love them so that they can become that person. And that's what we call a, a lifestyle of honoring of celebrating you know we have got many times a culture of shame of breaking down of suspicion mistrust and so we're always competing with other people but hey what a gift to be able to bless people to become who christ has called them to be i remember one day i was at, at our high school and as this one guy was walking in and we there, were there for a church service and the lord said to me this guy is going to be the next leader of his residence and of the campus and i thought like no because he had like hair all over the place judge him on his out you know on the looks yeah and uh, he wasn't even in church you know i just connected with him and then he ran away and i prayed for a couple of weeks and then i remember the lord said to me go to that place and one day this is what's going to happen in his life and uh, three years later <laughs> he was sitting in my office and he was saying like see us do you do you think i must go for this leadership position and i said to him hey, I think you must go and pray about it and then come back and I can only confirm what God has already told you then or not confirm what I feel in my heart, but I'm not your fortune teller. So go to God and he went to the Lord. He came back. He said, yes, the Lord said, yes. I said, hi, I want to agree with that because the Lord already told me three years ago <laughs> when I saw you the first time. He said to me, when you were just the first year, he told me this is what you're gonna, what's going to happen in your life. And so sometimes we mustn't just be like hey, quick to share. Sometimes God wants to share his mysteries with us concerning people. But let's begin to treat them in love. Let's begin to honor them. Let's begin to walk in a space with them where they feel loved by God. The second thing is that spiritual gifts, the second principle, spiritual gifts will always exalt Jesus. It will not exalt man. It will not point to man. Jesus will be the center. People will feel more in love with him. You know, and that's why sometimes we have to like, ah, not focus on the froth and the bubbles and the experiences or the falling down. Or some people think if I shake, then that's the Holy Spirit. Or when I fall down, then that's the Holy Spirit, you know? No, no, no. Is Jesus center stage? Because A, the Holy Spirit draws attention to the work of Jesus and to who the Father is. And so there's some beautiful scriptures because Jesus said, hey, you can do great signs and wonders. 
can read the scripture in your notes, Matthew 7, 21, 22 and 23 says, Hey, depart from me because you do not know me. That word for knowing is yada. So, so everything we do, we want to grow in relationship with God. We want to know the Father. We want to know Jesus in a greater way. And so, therefore, the third thing, the third principle is, hey, once we have the love, once we, our focus is to glorify God, glorify Jesus, we need to spend a lot of time with the Lord. Because as you spend time with Jesus and the Father, it's going to rub off on you. You know, I've had many times, you know, people just like you saying, and even even yesterday, you know, somebody was just saying, when uh, I just greeted him, the car was driving by. And he said he, he, his whole life changed by me just asking, how are you doing? What's happening? Oh, it was people I met for the first time. And the guy sent a WhatsApp to a friend of mine that sent it to me and says, he, they were just so challenged and so their whole lives changed because of they felt the presence of God. But it started with a personal greeting. It just started with like, hey, being interested in a child, being interested in where they come from. It's like, oh, touch these people. And that's what he did. So the presence of God in our lives, it's not something we switch on or switch off. God is with you. And so people will know that you spend time with God. You know, it says there in, in Acts, and these beautiful scriptures here in your notes, but in Acts it says they, when they marveled when they saw the miracle, and then they realized that the disciples were with Jesus. You know, people are going to marvel at the signs and wonders, but do they realize that you've been with God? So being with God, that's when he rubs off. I remember with one of my daughters, one day I was a financial manager, and I walked in, and then everybody was staring at me the whole day, and I couldn't understand why, but there was, what happened is that morning, she was going to like a, ballet party or something and she was full of glitter and so so we were just like playing together before I went to work but all the glitter came off on my face and my hands and all that stuff and I didn't realize that you know so when I got into work people were thinking like oh what is this financial manager doing in the evenings you know <laughs> because there's all the glitter on my face and they realized because I've I rubbed off she rubbed off on me and all the glitter came onto my face and into my hair you know and it's such a beautiful picture. When we spend time with God, God rubs off on us. And then we begin, His presence begins to overflow to other people. And so that's the picture I want to leave us with, you know. And then um, there's a couple of other principles. The difference between power and authority. You can read that, you know. Authority is uh, simply delegated authority by Christ. And the principle, the picture there is, you know, the speed cop or the traffic person standing on that little circle, or stopping that massive bus, lifting their hand, have got, they got the power to stop the bus? Uh-uh. But they have authority, delegated authority. And because of that badge that they're wearing, that bus will stop when they lift their hands. So we also have authority in the spiritual realm to pray, to decree, to live by faith. You know, power is the dynamite. It's the working of God when you lay hands on people. And But there's a bit of difference between that. We also doesn't you just need to know the power of God, but we also need to know the authority of God. And then there's uh, talking about obedience and humility, you know. Obedience uh, grows you in your authority. The more you become obedient to God, the more you live by faith, the more he releases authority. And the more he releases responsibility in your life. So he's not going to tell you, go and pray for the president. If you have not started to pray somewhere in the little for your family member or to pray and lay hands on your small group member. So start practicing in the environment that you're in. Don't wait for a breakthrough day. Start where you are right now. Okay? Don't say, hey, I want to be evangelist, but but you you're not never testifying to the people around you. So start with the fish and the bread that Christ has given you. And then always, lastly, stay humble. Stay humility. The meek shall inherit the earth, Matthew 5 says. You know, it says God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. And you know, one of the ugliest things is spiritual pride. Whether you're in deep intellectual debates, Christian theological intellectual debates, or on the other side, if you take so much pride in your experience and the things that God has used you in, where Jesus doesn't get the glory, you know. And so we must be very careful in speaking out against those, even part of the church that maybe do not believe in the gifts or 
You know, so let's stay humble. Let's trust God that they will also begin to see that. You know, I come from a very conservative church. You know, I grew up in a church where the gift was a taboo. You know, I asked the leader one day, I said to him, hey, I read about these things in the Bible. The speaking in tongues, and it's, it's there. Uh, and then he said to me, no, 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 only some specialized people can move in the gifts. Then I went to another leader and the, that leader said, no, the gifts, the gifts passed away with the first church. <laughs> you know? And I thought, like, no, that's not what I see, you know, because <laughs> I hear about what God is doing all, all across the world and in China and Iran and many of these countries. It, it, it's, it's impossible, you know. And then I thought, no, maybe he, he studied seven years and I didn't, so he knows everything. And I realized, like, sure. And I got really offended, you know, because I should have asked him, hey, take me to some of those people that minister in those gifts because I want to learn. I want to see how it's done, you know. But then I realized, like, hey, let's be humble because I also used to be very religious, very traditional and didn't believe in the gifts until God started to show me. And so let's continue in our growth of hunger, of desire towards Him, but let's be very careful towards spiritual pride because humility, hey, God will show you. Only the humble will have grace. Grace means an enablement to do His will. And I want the grace of God in my life, even in my weakness, but I need to be humble. And so I want to pray for you that as we embark and especially in the next sessions as we're going to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, hey, you have the freedom to be used by God. Say, Lord, use me. And hey, sometimes you're going to feel used. But say, God, I want to see your kingdom come. I want, to, I want to know your will. I want to hear your voice, God. And get into the scriptures and get into knowing God. And surround yourself with people that are really hungry for God. Stay away from the critical ones. Stay away from the negative ones that always know what they're against. Now, listen to what God is saying. God is always moving. God is full of glory and majesty. So let me pray for you. Father, I want to thank you that we can end this session by just giving you glory and say, thank you, Lord. Give us an unconditional love for you and for your people. Lord, we don't know that love, but Lord, we want to be moved by compassion. And we repent, Lord, that sometimes we dishonor so many people. And Lord, we need to learn how to celebrate, how to honor people and help us, Lord, we want to know your honor. We want to know your way of living. Lord, that when you saw the Simon, you said Peter. When you saw the Saul, you said Paul. So Lord, even in our own lives, we cast off shame. Give us a boldness to speak and to know and to hung be hungry for you. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.